In this video, we'll set up our Flutter application for our product development. This video will focus on the setup only of our Flutter application. This setup will cover everything we need to do before we start the actual development of our product. This video is a part of a series but can be watched on its own and used on its own. If you want to follow along, you can head over to github.com forward slash foldstacks forward slash boxed out. You can clone the code onto your desktop or you can do a flutter create command and use that project as well. Once that's done, you can open up your code in Visual Studio Code and we'll start the cleanup process. We'll remove all of the comments as well as the my homepage widget from the main file. We'll set up the three most important parts of our app's architecture. Number one is the state management. Number two is our navigation setup. And number three will cover our dependency inversion system that we'll be using. With the latest updates in the stacked package, we now cover all three of this through some code generation and some generic state handling functionality. You can go over to your pubspec.yaml file and we'll add the stacked package. We'll use version 1.9.1. And in addition to that, we'll also add the stacked generator as a dev dependency. The generator is optional, but we will be using it in this video. Please know that this video does not act as a full guide to using the stacked architecture. I've actually created a full series dedicated to the stacked architecture, which I'll link the first video for in the top right corner of this video. The first thing we want to go over is our state management. Stack uses a basic view view model approach where the view displays the UI and the view model maintains the state of the UI as well as performs any actions that the user wants to perform. The view models make use of services and those are the only three parts of our state management architecture. View, view model and services. To show off the state management functionality in a very basic way, we'll create a new folder under lib called UI and in that folder create a new folder called startup. Then inside of the startup folder, we'll create two files, startupview.dart and startupviewmodel. When you open the view model file, we can create a new view model by typing stkb and pressing enter. That will use the base view model snippet and we'll do the same for the startup view by typing stkv to create a stacked view. If you don't have these snippets yet, I will link them in the description. You'll find the file called stacked.snippets.json. You simply copy all of the JSON that's in that snippet. Then you go to your Visual Studio Code, you press Ctrl, Shift and P and then you select Configure User Snippets. Once you select that, you'll get an option for the languages and you select dart.json. If you already have snippets, you can simply add these ones in there or you can just paste the entire snippet file in your dart.json file. If you restart your Visual Studio code, your snippets should be in action when you're using Dart or Flutter. So now if you type SDK, you'll see the base view model option as well as the view option. That is the basic setup of a view for our state management solution as well as a view model. This view, as you can see, has a builder function and that's where you will build the UI of whatever widget is associated with the view model. And inside of this view model, you'll have all of your business logic as well as interactions with the services. Once you change something in this view model, you'll be able to call notify listeners, which will rebuild that builder as you see in the reactive constructor. This video will not be a deep dive. I just want to repeat that and give you the source where I'm actually doing a full deep dive on the state management setup for Stacked. If you go to the YouTube channel or foldstacks.com, there is an episode called State Management with Stacked and I go over all of the state management possibilities that you can use when using the stacked architecture. Anything that you want to know about stacked, there is a seven part series that you can watch in full. So this video is only to show the new and improved setup for this stacked application. The next thing to set up is our navigation functionality. So we'll copy the startup view folder and paste another one and then change all the references to startup to the word second. This will simply be to 
show the navigation functionality and how we'll set that up. So we'll change startup view to second view and startup view model to second view model. When you look at the code on the screen closely, you'll see that the code looks a bit different from the stuff that I showed a few seconds before. And that's because I cut out about four minutes of the tutorial. The only thing you have to actually add into your view model is a function called do something that returns a void. You can also add text in the center of the screen for the startup view. Then for the center of the second view, we'll just create a container with the color red and set the width and the height to 100. And now onto the actual new part of the stacked functionality. If you use the stacked architecture before this, you know that we used the auto route package. That was about to change and we wouldn't have been able to use it anymore. So I reached out to the author and asked if I can use the code from the old auto route package and build that into our stacked package. This will now allow us to define our routes for our app using the stack package and we'll need no external dependencies to complete the set. So in the lib folder, create a new folder called app and inside that folder, create a new file called app. In that file, we'll create a class called app setup. This class actually serves no purpose at the moment. It's only here so that we can have the annotation on top of a class. We'll add the new annotation called stacked app. This class takes in a list of routes, which uses the same routes that the auto route package has defined with slight name changes. We can add a material route and set the page value to startup view. We'll also pass the initial value to true. And then we can supply a Cupertino route and set the page value to second view. And as you know, for navigation, we use the stacked services. So we'll add the package into our pubspec.yaml file. Stack services provide you with a navigation service, dialogue service, snack bar service, as well as a bottom sheet service to allow you to show these things from your view model and not have to do it inside of your UI code. Then you can open up the main.dart file and we'll set the navigator key equal to stacked service dot navigator key and then for the on generate route we'll construct a new instance of the stacked router and pass it the on generate route function that is the router that will be generated when we run the flutter pub run build runner build command and before you can run that you actually need to go to your pub spec file and add your build runner package once that has been added, you can run the build command in the build runner package using the flutter pub run command. When this command completes, you can open up your app folder and inside you'll see your app.router.dart file. This will contain all of the routes defined that you've passed into the stacked application. It will also have all of the automatic serialization if you have past any parameters to your view file. Now in the main file, you can go ahead and import your app.router.dart file. When you open up the startup view model, this is where we'll use the navigation service to navigate to our new view. The way we get our navigation service is from our locator, which is a wrapped version of the get it package. But before we can even do that, we have to set up our dependency system in our application. This is the last part of the app setup. And in the stacked application, you can define a list of dependencies. For the navigation service, we will use a lazy singleton. And for the class type, we will pass the navigation service. The types of dependencies that you can use are lazy singleton, a singleton, a pre-solved singleton, as well as a factory service. The video in the top right corner and linked below goes over the dependency injection in depth and you can watch that if you want to get an idea of how the get it locator works. Once you run the build command for the build runner, you'll see a new file created called app.locator.dart. Now you can open up the startup view model and import the app locator. Then we'll change the do something function to call navigation service dot navigate to and we'll pass in routes dot second view. Before we run the code, head over to main dot dart file and call the setup locator function before you call run app. This will register the functions registered in the locator in your app dot locator dot dart file. 
And in addition to that, when you go to the startup view, you can add a floating action button. And in that floating action button for the unpressed function, you can call the do something function. So now when you run the code and you click the floating action button, it should navigate to the second view with a Cupertino navigation style. And that's basically the entire setup for state management, navigation and dependency injection. From this point, all of the setup is complete and we can start developing the actual application. Just to show you a preview of the UI that we'll be building, this is the actual complete UI for the client application that we are building. Next week, we are going to focus on the login view as well as the create account view where we'll be able to create our accounts and create that user profile on Firebase. There's quite a lot of functionality to build. So as soon as we start with the client application, we'll slowly build out the backend to allow for us to actually develop the client application as well. Thank you guys for watching. Please let me know if you're enjoying this video. Please share this video and subscribe if you've enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next week.